episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 31st episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of some of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are, and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the Associate Athletic Director for Sport Performance at Georgetown University, Mike Hill. Mike, thanks for being with us, brother. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Listen, pal, before we get too far into this, man, who is Mike Hill? It's a great question. Way to dive dive right in. Um, I guess Michael Hill. I am a, I, I guess, a small town guy with uh, big dreams and a strive for greatness. You know, I, uh, I'm originally from Fort Dodge, Iowa. I, um, you know, graduated in 1997 ish. Right. So, uh, I knew I wanted to become a strength coach or do something within the, uh, you know, fitness, fitness realm. And so I set my sights on that early on as, as a young kid. Um, and I never really looked back. And so, you know, I guess that's kind of defined me around everything I've done is the training, um, is training, is fitness, is trying to better myself. And then once I realized about bettering myself, it's, it's obviously, you know, giving that gift away of trying to make everybody else better. Um, you know, I went to, uh, uh, like I said, I'm from Fort Dodge, Iowa, but I went to university, Iowa State University first, and I transferred to Northern Iowa, um, where I graduated in health promotion, uh, minor in coaching, and then Moved out to California for a short bit and then came to Washington, D.C., and I've been here since 2004. So I've been lucky enough to be at one place for this 16-plus years. And, uh, you know, once you find a good place, obviously you put your roots down, you establish everything. And then now I'm at the stage where uh, I'm trying to teach somebody else to take over. So whether or whether that's not that some person, whether it's someone else, but I would like to think that in that this 16 year realm that uh, I've laid those roots so somebody else could come in and be successful. So all in all, I guess that's kind of a, a longer version of, of who I am um, from from just, like I said, small town kid with big dreams, I guess. And an impeccable eye for art on the road. <laughs> The hotel art, it's damning out there. There's not, uh, there's not much good hotel art. Um, you know, if I, that could be my, that could be my plan B. If I'm, I, it, you know, if I got fired tomorrow, I just go straight to the Westin, you know, in the Marriott. They, uh, they definitely need a, a curator globally for all of their uh, hotels. So, 
No doubt about it. I, I don't know, man. Maybe it's something about graduating in, in 1997 to <laughs> so like, guys yeah. who have been able to find some, some tenures at places because it's uh, you've been there just as long as I've been down here. And it's been yeah, pretty yep. awesome to see everything grow up there, to, you know, around you, especially the new title, bro. Yep. No, thank you. So being there for a while and being a guy who went from the Midwest to the left coast and now to the nation's capital, there's been a ton of times where there's been learning situations and aha moments, but if you wouldn't mind sharing with us one learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Um, you know, I guess uh, in my intro of, of who am I, I, I also was a personal trainer. I started, started out as a personal trainer. So there was a lot of those moments within that, you know, within uh, figuring out that it's not about the program, it's about the whole program, the global program. Um, but I guess the one thing, w one uh, instance that kind of sticks out is, is with coach Augie Morelli, who was with here, who was here at Georgetown before me. Um, and I wouldn't be here with, with, without his tutelage, without him, uh, giving me that call and giving me, you know, the, the bring in the right hander. Um, so him, he was, he, he was very smart. He was all about numbers, all about percentages, all that stuff, all about great programming, but he was a master motivator. He was a master motivator and he was a teacher. Um, he would, he would love you up, but at the same breath, he could, uh, you know, mother F you. Um, and with that, you know, I saw how he controlled the room as the alpha, but also as he controlled the room silently and walk up to somebody if somebody had failed on something. Um, and so there was, there was one moment where, uh, he literally was like, Hill, you, you, you're sticking around for this lift. Right. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I'll, I always help out with football and whatever. He's like, all right, cool. Cause we're gonna, we're gonna light this chair on fire. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? He's like, we're going to get these guys motivated. We're going to get these guys jacked up. So he had been sitting in this chair for quite some time and the screw kept falling out. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to smash this chair. It's a new, it's a new year, a new me, a new team, whatever. So he smashed it threw some lighter fluid on it and lit the uh, chair on fire in the middle of the weight room. Um, but I saw how motivated those kids were just by seeing that I don't, you definitely couldn't get away with any of that stuff now, but you know, for me, it was all about, I was, I was all about learning and, and implementing, implementing these programs and these percentages and these numbers and everything. And here's this guy who knows all of that, but is smashing chairs and throwing belts and whatever. And he's one of the smartest guys in the room and he's getting these guys motivated in different ways. Now I say that in the same as he didn't do that for every single lift. Um, he would walk up to a kid and silently say something and the kid would, you know, hit a 500 pound squat, like, you know, and he wouldn't have to do that. But that's kind of the moment that, and, and there's probably moments before that, but the moment where I was like, you know, maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. I, I need, I need to look and be very tactful how I coach these athletes. Um, and I was coaching beforehand and I was putting in pr programs before that. Um, but I think, you know, getting, uh, seeing Augie do all those little things and not just, I guess that specific one of him lighting the chair on fire, but that just sticks out in my mind. I mean, there was many of them, but like that, but, uh, only that's the only one I can share with the viewers. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, a, I guess in a long story, it's, it's, he showed, he showed me all about the program and then he showed me all about the program and how to put it all together. I still think that we need more people like Augie Morelli and what we do. We, we do. We definitely do. We need to bring him back. As Coach Craig Fitzgerald at Tennessee says, we need to bring him back. Yeah, we need to bring him back. No doubt about it. Coach Morelli's a great man. Yep. Well, but, but listen, you know, I mean, Hill does a lot, and he's all over the place and, and doing all this, but you're also a real inquisitive guy and a guy who has, the, has a book club, if we may. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. – Having a book club means you're an inquisitive guy who probably has questions he's looking to have answered. So if, if Hill had one question he could ask and he knows he's going to get the answer, what would that be and why? There's a lot. There's a lot that goes into that. There's I could go different avenues before I preface this. I could ask, you know, one who killed JFK, right? I could ask that. 
I could ask about black holes, some type of Big Bang thing, maybe some theory of everything, or maybe some – is re reincarnation real, right? Um, but really, I guess in joke, I'm going to say two things. And jokingly, I, I would want to say why can't you unpush an elevator button? Like who can, who can answer that question for me, which, which really bothers me when I go to these hotels? You can press a button to go up and get into a hotel room. Why can't you have accidentally unpress that button – to not go to that room, right? To not go to that floor. Um, and that's a long story about a bunch of tons of other questions, um, which will tell you a little bit about myself that way. But the one question I probably would ask is, uh, you know, could I ask is, is, is why, you know, the why, you know, everybody wants to know, you know, what your why is, what, uh, my why is. And I, and I say that as a, you know, I think I know what my why is, I think I'm pretty sure um, and I have a good idea, but if I could ask that question to myself, not to anybody else or I don't, you know, I would love to know your why. I would love to know each one of my players' whys. Um, that would be great. But internally, if I could figure that out, it would it would help me kind of in my thoughts. Um, so I would so I would ask myself that that question. Um, I don't know if that's a if that's a good one or if that's appropriate for this, but um, I think everyone's striving for that, you know, a hundred percent, dude. I love that. I don't know if we ever really want to find out who shot Kennedy. Cause that might be bad for us. We actually do know who did it. It just, uh, it hasn't, come out. <laughs> yeah, it just hasn't been released yet. It hasn't been released yet. But those are all the other questions that came to mind, um, about that is, you know, reincarnation and all that stuff. Those are all things that I'm, why I'm reading those books, the book club, but yeah. No. And it's a lot of unique books that are like it, it, there are things that you look at and you're like I bet that's a pretty cool topic I you know <laughs> yeah. and it's like it's not like strength coachy stuff but like we need more renaissance men in this field and renaissance women in this field like that look at things outside of just sets and reps and how do you communicate to a kid better so they understand squat depth or whatever you know yeah yeah that's a you know when I get and I get a lot of book recommendations and, and I've been reading like that for quite some time, um, reading magazines and things and, you know, articles and Augie used to not want to uh, read the uh, NSCA's journals. So he would just give them to me and knowing that I would I would read them and he'd be like, oh, summarize this for me. And so I would highlight them, do read all this stuff, whatever. And they're all inconclusive, most of the studies. Right. And most of those things. But um, he would read it and I would just, you know, give him the, the cliff notes on that stuff. But um you know, I was always reading a, something strength or fitness wise. I was always reading kind of something outside the box, um, like a ninja mind or verbal judo or something. Um, and then I was reading, I always had a bathroom read or something to sit down, a short little read in the bathroom. Uh, but I found, you know, you know, even in uh, uh, there was a professor here, uh, Chris Voss, um, who wrote, you probably know, Never Split the Difference. It's a book about negotiations. When you read that book, really, you're negotiating with all these athletes almost every single day. You're negotiating with your job and coaches. There's a lot of things that could apply to that. So when you see you're looking at that, you're like, wow, that's that's an outside the box look or outside the box book. But when you look at it and really read it, I can apply a lot of that stuff. You know, there's been, I guess, uh, many crazy books that I've read scale, um, verbal, like verbal judo mission, blacklist, number one, first in hero living. There's been a lot, but each one of those pieces, I take a lot and try and apply it to, uh, what I'm doing as a job. Um, and a lot of it has to do with communication skills of communication and negotiation and, and, uh, investigation really, you know, so I dig it, brother. I dig it. Yep. Now, listen, this is a tough question because, like, so we're recording this the first week of March. I think this will come out the second week. So this right now is borderline impossible. But what's Hill's escape? Yeah, it definitely is borderline impossible. When you submerge uh, yourself into this, you know, it, it – uh, and, and – uh, go all in and have a passion for it and basically live it inside and outside. Um, you know, it is hard to escape. You know, I guess I have my daily wind up and I have my daily wind down. Um, you know, mentioned like books, you know, I'm trying to fill the dark space around me, I guess, with books, podcasts, um, just uh, movies, trying to learn, you know, have conversations with coaches and, and whatnot. Um, I guess the cliche answer would be 
to to have uh, you know spend time with my family, my wife, my daughter, mother-in-law, um, friends, and connecting. But uh, I guess also during this time and almost every day, I have an unconnection. I guess where I unplug and escape, and it really has nothing to do with anyone. It only has to do with myself and and having quiet time. I guess you know. And I guess I take that quiet time. It could be here in 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 the office. Um, it could be in my car. It could be at home. It could be just in a room in my basement. Um, uh, you know, it, anywhere. But it's not like I'm. I shouldn't say I'm meditating. Um, you know, because that wouldn't be the right term. It would just be like just quiet alone time, doing something that I that I personally enjoy. You know, because you know how weird it is. We're always plugged in. We're always on. People are always coming at us with different things and and problems and answering. And you know, 90% of our jobs a lot of time is just responding to all that stuff and responding to those problems. And so, you know, whether it's me going grocery shopping and just being quiet and listening to some music um, on my phone, I don't. I guess I, I listen to a lot of Pandora Station, a lot of things when I'm when I'm working out. But uh, when we're traveling and flying and somewhere else, I mean, I put on some ambient music. I'm listening to Rain. Um, right behind me, I have uh, uh, another computer, but I'll, each day it has like something that offsets the day. And so right now it's got a beach scene with some ocean and some rain, just kind of like a it's it's a nice day, but it's also raining outside. If it's hot out. I'll put it on this computer, um, you know, a picture of a looping uh, snow blizzard um, to try and offset the day. And so I guess it's quiet time, alone time with me. That's kind of, you know, how I escape, I guess. I dig it, man, because I think that even more so, like, being able just to breathe and be in your own space is really way more powerful than we probably ever thought growing up. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, they, like uh, – you know, I, I guess for us, you know, we don't have weekends, so we don't do a nine or a nine to five Monday through Friday. So we we can't, you know, some people out there live for the weekends. We, you know, we can't we can't live for the weekends because that would ruin our weekdays. And uh, you know, it it uh, we have to be the example for all the athletes, for all of the, you know, even the coaches, but for for ourselves, I guess. And so, you know, kind of just winding down however you can and however you can find that space it's 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 really hard in college athletics because you have to be pumped up all the time and everybody talks you know about how much coffee they drink and how much you know how jacked up and they bring the juice for this workout this workout this workout um but on the flip side of or that that bottom of that curve um you, you got to take time for yourself and escape so and unplug no doubt brother well, listen man as always Great to catch up. Great to see you, man. Absolutely. So happy to hear you're doing awesome. Congrats on the new title, brother. That's dope. Thank you. And we will be in touch real soon, my man. Awesome, man. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Cheers.